So ticks and mosquitoes are going to have a field day, even if we aren't. And it would be nice if... It's a there we go. Okay, so uh, here is a list of the changes in field day rules, which I will now go through in detail. No, only kidding. What not bugs again? I will not tell you who said that when I gave this talk four years ago. And the reason that there are bugs again is that the ticks are spreading and the geography of Lyme disease, which started in Connecticut, is spreading south. And we've got a load of Lyme disease in Virginia. We've always had a problem with other tick-borne illnesses like Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, Tularemia, Ehrlichiosis, which are uh, indeed less common, but uh, I've treated patients for all of them. Uh, mosquitoes are also a problem, and Zika, Dengue, and Chikungunya. Hello? My uh, particular favorite in terms of names of diseases are Latin American. They are spreading south. They are being transmitted by mosquitoes in Florida and in Texas, and they're heading south. Uh, they're heading north. We have always had a problem in Virginia with rest. West Nile, uh, about 95% of people who get that are asymptomatic. But there are some uh, mosquito-borne diseases that can screw up your brain. So all the important points are on a one page or on the website. And Zoom makes it easy to leave surreptitiously. Feel free, yeah. feel free to do so. I think that's Don who isn't muting. Yeah, Don, Don, you need to mute yourself. You're coming over. Yeah, I just muted him. Okay. So uh, the reason we're doing this now is that reported cases of tick-borne disease in the United States have doubled between 2004 and 2016. I think that's real. I don't think that's just more recognition. Uh, rising global temperatures have an effect on the distribution of ticks. And also when it's warmer, they stay active for a longer period of time. Also, we're contributing because there are increases in commerce and travel. And we'll see about some new ticks that have just joined us because of that. Um, also, there has been recolonization of historical habitats that had been eliminated through deforestation. And the ticks are back along with their uh, close friends. I'll show you a picture in a moment. Here are the common Virginia ticks. The Lone Star Tick, so-called because of the white spot, which is only present in females. The Black Leg Tick, which I've marked because that's the one that spreads Lyme. And the thing that's uh, characteristic is that all stages of that tick have black legs, which you can see are not present on our other friends, and the American dog tick. So the Lone Star tick is the most common. Uh, it spreads some Rocky Mountain spotted fever and ehrlichiosis. Uh, very interesting and, and relatively newly recognized is that the bite can cause a delayed allergy. Uh, the saliva of the tick contains galactose, alpha-1,3 galactose. We'll have a test on this at the end of the session. And uh, that particular carbohydrate antigen is present in all mammalian meat. More on this in a moment. The dog tick, only the female bites, but it spreads right. It's the major spreader of Rocky Mountain spotted fever and anaplasmosis. And the black leg tick, otherwise known as the deer tick, spreads Lyme disease. So be aware of the color of the legs on ticks that you may run into. Whoops. Now let me see if I can go back here. There we go. So these are small uh, ticks and the black leg tick, it's actually the lymph, the lymph, God, the nymph that does most of the biting. And that's a tiny little critter. This is an inch down here. The Lone Star Tick, the male has a fairly distinctive uh, coloration on its back 
and the dog tick. So be aware of small ticks. This guy has been also called a seed tick. And I tried to protect the uh, anonymity of the white-footed mouse, but the white-footed mouse is the major uh, transmitter and host that spreads the disease to ticks. And one of the reasons we're having more Lyme disease in central Virginia is that the white-footed mouse has been deprived of some predators and so can spend more time out foraging for food and getting ticks on it. Now, a newcomer. This uh, tick was only identified here a couple of years ago, Haemophysalis longicornis, otherwise known as the longhorn tick. And it started north, but you can see on this map that we've got plenty of cases in central Virginia. So the Asian longhorn tick was found in numbers in the hundreds on a sheep in New Jersey in 2017. It is mostly a parasite of animals, but it can parasitize humans and uh, human bites have been recorded. Interestingly, and this may be true for many of us, the w females can reproduce without uh, male input, uh, parthenogenesis, which is why the numbers of these ticks is going to expand uh, very rapidly. Anyway, they carry uh, a bunch of tick-borne diseases, and we have to pay attention to this one. It also is reported to cause red meat allergy. Again, more on this in just a moment. Mosquitoes are also a problem. Aedes aegypti is the major spreader of Zika, which is the one we are going to be most worried about. And that's in the southern part of the United States. Again, Florida, where it's doing its damage, and Texas as well. But this is Aedes albopictus. And albopictus, at least in the lab, can be infected with Zika, and it is already all the way up and down the East Coast. We've got it in the central Virginia in fairly large numbers. Culex, which spreads malaria, this is the one that bites almost entirely at dawn or immediately after dusk. So those of you who are planning to spend all night in the field, um, hi. So what are you going to do about it? Well, first of all, if you're walking somewhere, walk in the center of the trail. Uh, the ticks are over here and over here. Now, in, you can prophylax your yard. Um, and this is really appropriate for areas with high tick populations. And we're one of them. Keep grass short. Um, bag grass clippings, unfortunately, because we know it's better for the lawn, but leaving lawn clippings behind on the grass actually increases the tick load. Now, if you're really vigorous, you can put a three foot moat of mulch around the yard, uh, dry wood chips or bark or something. I, I have never seen anyone do that. Blow leaves in the piles for composting use a string trimmer on weeds. Tallness of green stuff is what attracts the ticks. Spraying does not work. I'm going to have a little bit more to say about the cardboard tubes in just a moment. Let's try that again. Okay, so if you're a class A or class B operator and you're going to set up in your yard, don't do it in tall grass not near leaf piles, not near wood piles, not near flower beds, not near brush, not near shrubs, not near wooded areas. And I pass this on. You can surround your station with a moat of wood chips or gravel. Yeah. Now, these tick tubes are interesting, and although I'd read about them, I learned a lot more about them from Mike McPherson just recently. They're, they're paper tubes, and they've got cotton inside, which is uh, soaked with permethrin, which I will have more to say about in a moment. And the cotton is gathered by mice, the white-footed mouse in particular, taken back to the nests. The permethrin then rubs off on all the mice. Permethrin, as we'll see in a moment, is an insecticide, not a repellent. 
And if you use 12 tubes for 14 acres, uh, any of us have 14 acres, uh, or areas with limbs or trash or bird feeders or flowers, do this once a year. And this has been shown to reduce the tick population in many areas. So if you want more information about it, Mike McPherson has indeed used these uh, to good effect. So uh, how to dress, uh, long sleeve shirts and long pants, right? I know it's hot. Bug repellent on clothing, uh, light colored clothing, tuck pants into socks or boots. And what happens is the ticks start on your shoes and crawl up. And if you have put insecticide on your clothing, which I will recommend, then they have to work a lot harder to get to your groin, which is what they're really aiming at. And as they crawl on your clothing, they are more exposed to the insecticide permethrin. And by the way, if your shirt's tucked in, they have to work even harder. So permethrin, which has come up several times, it's a synthetic version of a chrysanthemum. It is an insecticide more than a repellent. And does it work fast enough to prevent bites? Yeah, if you've got all, everything tucked into everything else. Permethrin sprayed clothing is probably not as effective as DEET sprayed clothing. On the other hand, it's not DEET. Now, you can get uh, commercially available clothing that has uh, permethrin built in, said to uh, last through 60 washings. And the, I bought a hat, well, a really weird hat, and it was uh, billed as including permethrin as a repellent. This was false advertising. It's a, uh, an insecticide, and the only thing the hat has ever repelled is my wife, Margie. Anyway, uh, there is resistance to permethrin among uh, mosquitoes in some regions, not so much for us. Okay, repellents. DEET is still the king of the repellents. It is really the best bet, and it is far less toxic than it was originally billed to be. It can be a topical irritant. You're going to put it on your skin. And for some people, it does produce a rash, which can be avoided by stopping the use of DEET. So you apply it to a uh, exposed skin. You can also apply it to clothing, um, although that is actually less effective in terms of the amount that you're applying. Picaridin, which is not DEET, Consumer Reports, and by the way, Consumer Reports just came out on this today. That's the July 2020 issue, uh, which is, again, an indication that this is an appropriate time to discuss this, uh, is said to be almost, uh, let me say almost equal to DEET in repelling ticks and mosquitoes. And the one that's recommended is Sawyer's Fisherman's Formula Picaridin. Uh, the most recent consumer reports says, and I have not yet had a chance to look at their data, that it works better in spray form than as a wipe. So picaridin is probably almost as good as DEET. Used to be very difficult to come by in Charlottesville. Now it's, it's quite widely available. Lemon eucalyptus, less effective against ticks than against mosquitoes. Uh, and uh, there, I, I have no... Um, conflicts of interest to declare, but they recommend a few of these uh, brands. Now, afterwards is where it gets entertaining. Remove clothing promptly. Not that promptly. We don't want Romanco taken off his clothes in public. Uh, do a careful tick check. Uh, this can be more fun and is vastly more effective if you've got somebody to help you. Look carefully at places where skin is oppressed to skin. Remember the scalp. Um, and again, that's based on cases that I've seen. Launder clothing. When you do that, you want to go through the high heat drying cycle because actually washing the clothing just alone, washing alone will not kill ticks reliably. Bathe within two hours. And for some of us, that's really important. And then gentle removal. Don't ever squish a tick. 
Uh, I myself treated a case of ocular tularemia where the tick was squished and uh, squirted its uh, contents, shall we say, into the patient's eye. And then if you've got a tick bite and it's a little red, it's a good idea to circle it with a ballpoint pen and then follow it daily. And here are the places that uh, you really want to check carefully in and around the hair, in and around the ears. I will spare you some very entertaining photographs of ticks in people's ears, under the arms, inside the belly button, between the legs and the backs of the knees. Uh, doesn't work so well if you're trying to do it all by, by yourself. Um, Brad Paisley had a song about ticks that uh, Terry told me about. I'd like to see you out in the moonlight. I'd like to kiss you way back in the sticks. I'd like to walk you through a field of wildflowers. <laughs> and I'd like to check you for ticks. And you never know where they might be and blah, blah, blah. Okay, ticks have to be attached for 24 to 48 hours to transmit Lyme disease. This is, the data are very good on this in animal studies, uh, which are experimental, but also human anecdote. However, those are not controlled studies, as we have certainly learned when we're talking about COVID-19. Uh, 24 hours for ehrlichiosis and anaplasmosis. And, you know, I'm talking about prevention. If you want to discuss the clinical features of these diseases, sure. Um, two to six hours for Rocky Mountain spotted fever. But another one that we've only recognized recently, Powassan or Powassan uh, virus can be transmitted in 15 minutes. This has been an issue in the Midwest. We haven't really seen it here yet, but it's a really bad act. So what do you do? Well, the first thing you can do is use a pointed tweezers, grab the tick in below the head, if you can, right next to the head, and then pull and slowly is absolutely key. Don't jerk or twist the tick because that ends up uh, leaving the tick's head embedded. Uh, these uh, non-pointed uh, uh, tweezers actually seem to work pretty well. I've not used them myself. One has to be careful about not squishing the tick if you're using one of these devices. And then uh, my experience with the commercially available tick removal items is limited. I will tell you that I did use one some years ago at field day to remove a tick from the butt of one of our co- uh, AARC members. It worked moderately well. That is actually my only experience with the commercially available devices. So grip the tick as close to the skin as possible. Pull gently for, I, I put down here approximately at least two minutes. If the head does come off, just leave it in place. Don't try to get rid of a tick by putting Vaseline on it. Do not apply lighter fluid or ether. Do not apply a lighted cigarette with the antenna of a keyed down HT. Definitely do not apply lighter fluid or ether and then apply a lighted cigarette. Although that probably will get rid of the tick. Don't squeeze the tick. And it, it ain't easy. If you look up the phrase tight as a tick, extremely close with one's money. If you have ever tried to separate a tick from an animal or some person's skin, you know what tight is. Oh, there we go. And uh, The Tick, a short-lived TV series. Avoid this as well. I watched half an episode. Now, another thing that's new but not in town is the so-called murder hornet. Uh, Vespa mandarina, Vespa mandarinia, the giant Asian hornet. So this is actually fairly common in Japan. They've isolated it twice in Washington State. Uh, it's actually used as food in Japan. Uh, it is helpful in eliminating pests, but it is a possible threat to honeybee colonies. Uh, it's not aggressive unless it's annoyed. It has a really long stinger, and it can sting through clothing, which most of our regular mosquitoes cannot. 
And the reason it, I mean, the reason it's called the murder hornet is some people are highly allergic. And if they are highly allergic, this can be lethal. Uh, they're about two inches long. So I, I wanted to mention a little bit more about the delayed red meat allergy. All mammals have uh, galactose 1,3-alpha-galactose in their tissue. This is not destroyed by heating. If one gets a bite with a tick who injects uh, alpha-gal, as it's called for short, in the um, into you, and you happen to have the appropriate genetic make. Just on the phone, yeah. Huh? On the cell phone, yeah. You can uh, become allergic. Now, the history of allergy here is, is actually interesting because the allergic response occurs uh, usually one to two hours after ingestion, consists usually of a rash, but can be severe enough to produce anaphylaxis and drive people into the hospital. Um, it is, uh, uh, it, it actually was discovered here at UVA, and it is not that uncommon. Uh, it is, the uh, alpha-gal does not occur in fish, doesn't occur in uh, vegetables, it does not occur in um, uh, poultry. So uh, just be aware of it. it. It Apparently in patients who've been followed over time, it does tend to resolve. It is treated as other allergic responses. Okay, anyway, don't confuse ticks with chiggers. Uh, chiggers, though very annoying, have not yet been shown to spread disease. Uh, and this is probably the single most important thing I want to say to you. Take seriously any fever, persistent fever, in Virginia without another explanation. In the summertime, either with or without a rash or a history of tick bite. Now that condition of a persistent fever in central Virginia in the summertime, we used to refer to as doxycycline deficiency disease because there are a number of tick-borne diseases that we've just discussed which present with fever, sometimes with, sometimes without a rash. In Rocky Mountain spotted fever, the rash actually occurs considerably later than the fever. So pay attention to this and uh, consult, uh, consult medical attention uh, if you are subject to it. Uh, the treatment is doxycycline. Please remember that doxycycline is a photosensitizer. So if you're going back out in the sun, uh, do be careful. Michael, we have uh, two uh, questions from uh, Warren and uh, we'll take Warren first and then uh, Bob Romanco. Hello, Mike. Hey. I have a question. Sorry. About uh, permethrin. Yes. Uh, uh, the U.S. Army uh, has used permethrin and uh, doused all the clothing, their uh, mm -hmm. uh, camos and whatnot, right. in that, uh, especially over in the Mideast, to uh, counteract uh, leptospirosis in particular. But I believe that uh, in doing so, they found out that they were uh, some of those people who had to wear those uh, uniforms that were allergic to permethrin. Is that a common occurrence? Uh, I, so I'm, should yeah. we worry about that when you're when spreading permethrin all around the yard and whatnot? Well, I'm, I don't uh, I have not seen a case. That's all I can say. Um, there is no question that there can be allergic reactions to anything. And uh, I, that's, it's very interesting that it was used widespread. Uh, lepto is in, you sure it was lepto they were worried about? Uh, anyway. Pretty sure it was leptospirosis, yes sir. Okay, well, interesting. Lepto, you know, in my experience in central Virginia is usually caused by swimming in streams that have passed under cattle. Um, rather than being uh, an arthropod-borne disease. However, um, the, the answer, I, I'm sorry, short answer to your question is, I have not seen that. I'm sure 
that it occurs. And it may be an allergic reaction or it may just be a chemical irritation for some people. And the problem with permethrin in clothing is it doesn't wash out. So. Exactly, but that's that's one of the benefits of permethrin is it doesn't wash out. So sure. you don't have to worry about reapplying, reapplying, reapplying. But I, so. I was just concerned about uh, the any possible allergic reactions among people. I, Thanks so much for answering. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Uh, we also have, uh, have Bob Romanko, and then uh, and then it looks as if Don Easton also has thing. Also, if you want to stop sharing your uh, screen. Oh, yeah. Gosh, thanks. Uh, we'll be able to see you big. So let's, uh, uh, Bob, go ahead. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, Michael, great job. Uh, thanks again. I really, really appreciate uh, you taking the time to put this together. Uh, Boy, you got a great way with words. I can listen to you all day. Uh, <laughs> Michael, uh, I have a question. Uh, I know this, this is going to be kind of weird, but uh, I've had several tick. Well, frankly, I've been a uh, smorgasbord for chiggers this year. Uh, I'm almost at the point where chiggers are worse than ticks, at least from a comfort standpoint. Absolutely. Uh, I am literally a walking hatchery. But uh, <laughs> I wanted to uh, ask you a question. This year, the very first tick bite I had, uh, was a uh, the little spotted wadanger, and uh, <laughs> I don't speak very good Latin, but uh, the tick that I had was the first time I've ever had a tick bite that like itched like crazy. I mean, I have never had a tick bite itch. And I told Brenda, I said, Brenda, this is really weird. This thing is itching like crazy. And I removed it fine. Uh, and then it, you know, it swelled up and did all the normal, you know, it was the first time I'd had that kind of reaction. Now, I haven't had any symptoms, no fever, nothing else, no target bullseye, nothing like that. But why does it itch when I've never had that happen before? You're, you are allergic to, you've had an inflammatory response to some component of the tick, either part of the head or... Uh, something the tick injected. Have you eaten any steak since then? No. <laughs> Aha. Okay. Well, a, that is of, of no real concern. As you know, the initial lesions of Lyme disease, which would occur later anyway, uh, mm. don't itch. So uh, you're, you're good with that. But uh, gee, an, a, a local allergic reaction to a tick bite that's nothing. And steroids, okay. you know, steroids are very good for that kind of thing. Um, and you're doing it right by keeping an eye on it. But uh, I'd be a little more concerned about this weird red meat allergy in that setting. Okay. Well, like I said, I had, I've obviously with COVID, I think we've all been sensitive to whether we have a fever or not. Yeah. So uh, I can tell you that, yeah, I've had no fever or anything like that. But uh, I just I just noticed that uh, you know it was just very very strange for me to have a such an itchy, you know I've never ever had that happen with a tick bite. Uh, well, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you is uh, DEET on clothing. I mean, I, yeah. you we one thing I I didn't want to really ask, but I wanted to mention it is you have to be careful with DEET on synthetics because it will actually I, you know, I had a, a, a Boy Scout who had a really nice pair of uh, nylon blend pants of some sort, and he, he sprayed DEET, and you could literally watch his, uh, well, I forget what the blend was, but you could literally watch it melt around his ankles. <laughs> so, uh, and, you know, thank you for saying that. That's actually important. And I, you know, have tried to present stuff that I've read that I see documented and so forth. And I have to tell you that my own recommendation is DEET on skin. Yeah. Permethrin, ugh, sorry, Warren, but permethrin on clothing. Right. That's, or, what, or, that's what we do. Yeah. yeah I, I, that's the way I do it. But there are people who use, recommend uh, DEET on clothing as well. Well, 100% DEET really melts plastic. Oh, and, no, uh, no, it's a no, great no. way to clean up a coax connector uh, if you've got a bunch of rubber uh, tape around it is you can get some bends 100% deep 
and spray it on that electrical tape. You wait a little bit, that puppy, will, you'll have the cleanest connector you ever saw. <laughs> okay, I'm impressed. <laughs> uh, we have, uh, have I, I guess, a question from, uh, I think, Don, and then uh, 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 Ed had, had raised his hand and lowered it, so I'll assume nope. he got his question answered. Oh, nope, he's re-raising it. So let's okay. go to Don Eason first, then to Ed, then to Kevin, and then to Warren. And then we should wrap up eventually. Not really a question, guys. I'm just going to say this. Our club is very lucky to have Dr. Michael Ryan as a member who is always up to date on this stuff. And while some might say, well, we hear this every year, it changes a little bit every year because it's up to date. And, well, you know, you can't put a value on that until somebody has trouble. And he said, helps them. I'm well, fine. Don, you're Stay healthy, good. Michael. Thank you, sir. And you're very kind. Actually, I looked this up because uh, the last time I gave this talk was in 2016. So that was four years ago. May sound like I'm doing it every year, but what can I say? No, we're going to make you do it every year. Okay. <laughs> Michael, you've been updating your one pager every year. Yes. And My question is, let's say you're out in the yard and you came home and did all these things and you quickly take a shower. Does just the bead of the water ever wash the ticks away before they've attached or once they get on your skin, are they attached immediately? I don't know the answer to that, Ed. But I know washing, sh showering works at preventing chiggers. Yeah, I mean, well, t and, and by the way, steroids are good for chigger bites too. But um, uh, ticks do not attach instantaneously. Okay. You, you see one on your hand or something, you go like that and you can get rid of it. But I don't, I, that's a really good question. Maybe for next year, I'll try and learn how fast ticks uh, uh, can uh, attach. Look. I was hoping somebody would have a question about gonorrhea or syphilis, but I'm not not going to raise my hand for that one. But let me just throw in quickly, Ed. Uh, one of the things you really need to worry about is the fact that your clothing, just because you stuck it in the clothing hamper to be washed, doesn't mean that the ticks aren't going to travel out of that. That was one of the big lessons I learned when I was working in some really tick intensive habitats. And, and yes, I do have uh, alpha gal and no, it's no fun. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, I've had it since 1986. That was 20 years before my allergist could discover what it was. But anyway, the, um, uh, what I found was critical was when you take your clothes off, put them on a piece of floor where you can see any escapees. And then immediately when you're out of the shower, Hang the stuff outside in the sun. Hang it outside in the sun for an hour, you're good. Because the ticks get overheated, they drop off, whatever it was. After that, they can go into the laundry, but do not stick them in the laundry immediately. You know, that We had a summer where we proved that was a bad way to go. Sorry, uh, Kevin, I, uh, well, let's see. Ed, did you get your question answered? Yes, I, I'm, I'm in good. Okay, then we'll go on to uh, Kevin. Sorry about yeah, that. Um, so my, my question is just recently, I pulled a tick off this past weekend and um, and kind of wondering what to do, like like when you do experience that and you take it off, it was on, I think for less than 24 hours, but I have been having a lot of headaches and stuff like that. But, you know, I went to see my doctor about it and he's like, oh, that, he doesn't think it's anything. I'm not really used to having, like, is, is it having a migraine for like almost four or five days a symptom? Is that something to be? Well, I mean, it, it could be. I would pay a lot of attention to fever. Okay. And uh, remember that the ones that, uh, the bugs that eat your brain are not spread by ticks, uh, although one can get late Lyme disease in the central nervous system. You're vastly too early. I mean, vastly too early for that. Um, I think what one might try to do is take a look, careful look at the tick if you pull one off yourself. Was it embedded? It was embedded. I used a tick key and was able to get it out and it was still moving around and didn't look like it was engorged. Uh, Beautiful. 
Okay, I think you're fine. Uh, there are lots of reasons for headaches, most importantly, stress. And, you know, you said migraine, and if you use that as severe headache, that's different. If you're using migraine strictly as migraine because you're prone to migraines with the vascular components and so forth, that I have never heard of being associated with any of the uh, arthropod-borne diseases. So I think you're fine. I mean, no. you know, <laughs> keep an eye on yourself. But let me just tell you, everybody, that hypervigilance is not a good thing. And that's being so concerned about yourself that everything <laughs> seems like it might be a, a great badness. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, I have one more question. Do ticks fly or they come from the grass and they work their way up the, your trunk to your arms? They work their way up. The mosquitoes are the ones that fly. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and they, and they, 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 they will drop out of vegetation too. They, they love to dive bomb you from limbs and things like that. Uh, Let's see, we need to, uh, to, to go to uh, Warren. Hey, Mike. Uh, I apologize. I uh, earlier referenced uh, lepto as yeah. uh, a problem, but I mischaracterized that, and I meant to say leishmaniasis. Ah, uh, which excellent. Which is what they were going for over in the Mideast. And well, I do apologize no, for that, sorry. Thank you, thank you, not at all. Now I can take off my to-do list looking for arthropod-borne leptospirosis. <laughs> sorry so, about that, I'm, I really do. <laughs> quite all right, quite all right. Uh, a, a veterinarians, urine, animal urine is the key spreader there and veterinarians get it a lot. It's kind of a fun disease, not if you have it. But that, thank you, sir. <laughs> 